God is good, isn't he? I'm telling you, he's so good. So good to be back tonight in this house with you. Just so good. I just appreciate you having me here this week. I, uh, I began to preach this gospel in 1983. And, uh, you know, been to a lot of places. And just, just the Lord's really been good to me. But I've never, I, I told Brother Chambers this, um, whatever day I got here, it must have been Saturday or Saturday, yeah. I said, I, I don't know if ever in my life I've ever went to preach a meeting that I knew what I was going to preach. I, I just never have. I, I normally, I, I just plead with God to help me get started, give me something to start with, and then I normally just struggle all week you know what to say and uh, but this trip I believe the Lord spoke to my heart I told my wife this before I left home I said I believe the Lord has shown me that, that this is the most important meeting I ever preached you say well you <laughs> not a lot of folks I said it doesn't have anything to do with it it doesn't have nothing to do with that I learned a long time ago the crowd's a wonderful thing but that doesn't have anything to do with whether God's there or we're in the will of God. That has nothing to do with it. But I do believe this, these four messages that God has given me was for this hour. I come tonight with the fourth one, and I've, I'm preaching under a title, The God of the Impossible. I'll tell you from the onset that... Uh, you know, as a preacher, a lot of times we, you know, we, we sometimes we think we got it worse than everybody else. I'm just telling you how it is for me. <laughs> just, you know, it just, uh, I mean, this is just not fair. And, uh, you know, you, you read about, I, I, I read the other day some pastor quit, been pa pastoring, you know, 25 years or something, he quit got out of the ministry and just told all the reasons why and I read all of his reasons why I quit and I said you know <laughs> I got a reason too because <laughs> he named them all off and I could probably put a couple of them with it but I'm going to talk to you about a man tonight had every reason to quit but he didn't quit I'm reading from the book of Jeremiah chapter number 32 if you'd like to stand with me I'm going to again read verse number 17 and I'll read down through the third verse of chapter 33. Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power, stretched out arm, and there's nothing too hard for thee. This is Jeremiah talking. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands, recompenses the iniquity of the fathers unto the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts is his name. Great in counsel, mighty in work. For thine eyes are opened upon all the ways of the sons of men to give everyone according to his way and according to the fruit of his doings. Which has set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, even unto this day and in Israel, and among other men, and hath made thee a name as at this day. And has brought forth thy people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs, with wonders, with a strong hand, with a stretched out arm, and with great terror. Has given them this land which thou didst swear to their fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. And they came in and possessed it, but they obeyed not thy voice. Neither walked in thy law. They have done nothing of all that thou commandest them to do. Therefore thou hast caused all this evil to come upon them. He's saying you, you, these people deserve everything they're getting, God. That's what he's saying. Behold, the mounts are coming to the city to take it. And the city is given unto the hand of the Chaldeans that fight against it because of the sword and of the famine of the pestilence. And what thou hast spoken has come to pass. And behold, thou seest it. And thou hast said unto me, O Lord God, buy thee the field for money and take witness for the city is given to the hand of the Chaldeans. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. 
Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for me? God's talking, folks. Is there anything too hard for me? We come to chapter 33, the first verse. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call unto me, I will answer thee. Show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Father, ask you tonight one more time for the unction of the anointing. God, we stand here a frail vessel, weak. We stand here, God, no reason for you to do it, but we just ask you tonight to help us one more time. God, for the people's sake, God, that you speak tonight in this house. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Now the, please. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. So the the book of Jeremiah, when you come to this book, you have to understand that it was written against the backdrop of supreme evil. That's, that's what was going on. The people, they've walked away from God. They've embraced the gods of the pagan nation around them. And because of their sin, God is bringing his judgment upon this people. And it's a time of pain time of sorrow, it's a time of death, a time of judgment, but it's in this atmosphere, it's in this time that Jeremiah was sent to preach the word of the Lord. Now I don't know if you ever thought about that. I, I, I looked at that and I thought, you know Lord, maybe, maybe it hadn't been quite so bad for me after all. Amen. But this is, this is the time, this is where this man of God is called to preach and he sent to a people that will not hear the message. <clears throat> they're, they're not listening to him. He sent to a people that turns a deaf ear to all his pleas for repentance. He sent to a people that are given over to their, sin, to their sins and they have no desire to hear from God. They have no desire to hear from God's man. And he's preaching in this climate and could I tell you he preached here for 50 years. I said for 50 years, he preached to people that did not want to hear him preach. He preached a message they did not want to hear. He was rejected. Amen. And it was a tragic time. It was a tragic time for the nation. He was sent to preach to them a message of judgment. Amen. I'm thankful I don't have to preach a message of judgment every service. Every once in a while, just because of the whole counsel of God, we find ourselves preaching on the judgment of God. But here this man, he's found himself on a regular basis preaching the judgment of God. Amen. He's sent to tell a people that God's angry at you. He's mad at you and you're judged. And, and Jeremiah, he was commanded to tell them, your nation's going to be invaded. That's what's going to happen to you. The enemy's coming and they're going to take you captive. And he was sent to deliver this message of final judgment. And he was sent to deliver it not just to the people, but to the king of that nation. As a result, he was not a very popular man. He was not a popular preacher. No, sir. In fact, he was arrested, thrown in prison by the king. Only crime he committed, preach the word of God. Preach the truth. Preach what God said. And he wrote these passages that we have read today while he was sitting in prison. Out of that tragic and difficult time, Jeremiah still sees a ray of hope. Amen. Sometimes it's hard to see. It's hard to have hope sometimes, isn't it? It's hard to see. It's hard to see the other side. It's hard to see through the darkness of the cloud that's over you. But somehow or another, Jeremiah could see past where that he was. Now he's here in that prison and the Lord came to him with a word of hope and a word of blessing and a word of promise. 
And the words of Jeremiah offer the same comfort to us today. I said the words that came to him are words of comfort that we in this building tonight can take. We're living in tough times. I said we're living in tough times. It's a rough time spiritually. It's a tough time for the church. It's a tough time for the family. It's a tough time for individuals. It's just tough. That's what it is. Amen. But I want you to know tonight that the same God that spoke to Jeremiah in that prison is the same God that knows where we are today. He knows what we face. He knows what the future holds. He knows where we're going. He knows what we're going to encounter tomorrow. And the next day and the next day, he knows. I said he knows what's going on. Amen. And I want you to know this same God that spoke peace to this man of God in that prison is the same God that knows where we are. Amen. He was and he is the God of the impossible. I said he's the God of the impossible. Let's look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah's confidence. I'm telling you, he had confidence here. I mean, he's in his prayer, he's got a prayer of hope, and he presents the evidence that he's collected about God that shows him to be the God of the impossible. He found hope in a desperate time. He's sitting there. I mean, he had no reason to have any hope, but in a desperate hour, he found hope considering the nature of of God. From here I want to just remind us tonight that God said, I'm the Lord and I change not. Amen. I, I'm, I'm thankful. I, as I get older, I, I'm going to tell you, I hate change. I don't know about you, but everything changes. I, I mean, it seems like everything works well and it, just let it work real good. They're changing. Amen. I mean, that's just the way it is. Everything is changing and I don't, I don't like change. Amen. But the God that we serve does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, the writer of the Hebrews told us. And so since he doesn't change, then we, you and I, can rest in the same hope that Jeremiah rested in in his day. He, the prophet, he starts out his message to us, pointing us to the creation. That's what he points out first of all. Oh, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power, stretched out arm, and there's nothing too hard for thee or for thee. So when Jeremiah considers the work of God's hands, amen, he understands that he is servant of God, a servant of God whom nothing is impossible to. Amen. The heavens above us, the world, Around us declare the power and the person of God and his creation declares him to be the God of the impossible I don't know if you've considered it lately but when you come to the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 1 one of the most powerful scriptures that you could ever read reads like this in the beginning God created heaven and earth I said in the beginning God created heaven and earth. He stepped on nothing. He stepped out on nothing and talked to nothing and nothing became something. Are you hearing me tonight? That's the God we serve. Amen. And it's the greatest example, I believe, of the power of God. When you look at it closely, no wonder the secular humanists promote the, promote the uh, theory, if you will, of evolution. I guess that's what it is. Do away with the infinite power of God and we can do away with God. Oh yeah. So no matter what lies in your path today, you have to remember this. You're born of God. You belong to God. God made you. <laughs> I said he made you. He made everything that is. I said he made it all. And he made you. Amen. And he can make everything out of nothing. Then we can trust him to take care of us. God's character. He saw his creation. I said he looked at that creation. And then he came to the character of God. And the language that Jeremiah uses to describe God in these verses should remind us of who 
God is. He's a God of grace. He's a God of love. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of provision. And he's a God of miracles. I said he's a God of miracles. And he's a God of power. He's a God that moves heaven and earth. And he suspends the very laws of nature if that's what's necessary to meet the needs of his people. All you have to do is look at Elijah or the three Hebrew children or Daniel or the widow at Zarephath or the 5,000 that Jesus fed with the little boys lunch or Mary and Martha and Lazarus. All you got to do is look at them. Amen. And the thing of it tonight is he hadn't changed. I said he has not changed. He's the same God now that he was then. And he still, and he still knows what it takes and possesses what it takes to see us through whatever we face in this life. I said, see us through it. Amen. We're going through it, folks. That's one of the things I've learned in this life. The reality is we're going through it. I mean, that's, that's the thing. We're not going to stop it. You know, I've just learned just to accept things the way they are. I used to, airplane didn't, didn't work right. You know, strand me somewhere for a day or two. I used to get all bent out of shape. I've sent in the hotel's room for two or three days, waiting on another flight, and you know, just miss meetings and just all my plans come apart. And I fumed and fussed and complained, but I've learned just, Lord, just whatever, just whatever, ever how it is, it's all right. Just, just whatever. Just, just I'm going through it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go right on through. Amen. Paul made it clear to us. He was going to supply all of our needs. <laughs> he made it very plain. He's going to supply all of our needs according to his riches in, in glory by Christ Jesus. That's what he's going to do. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. He saw God's character. And he saw God's deliverance. Amen. Sitting in that prison now. I mean, he, he, he finds confidence in the Lord's power. As it's delay, as it's displayed in the deliverance. You remember our text? Oh, he talks about that great deliverance out of Egypt. I mean, that, 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 the slaves being delivered. He, he, he brings that all to the forefront. And he begins, begins to recount how the Lord moved to deliver that nation. And he remembers how God brought him into the land of Canaan. And he writes of how the Lord demonstrated his power in saving his people. And that thought just began to give him confidence. I said he gave him confidence. He gave him hope in the midst. 50 years of preaching. Nobody wants to hear sitting in a prison cell for preaching the gospel. And he found hope in God. Should be the same for us. Just think about it. Think about the vastness of this universe. I mean, I, I don't know, you know, they're, they're telling me they, I saw something today, said found another planet, you know, bigger than us and may have life on it. I don't know what's out there. But all I do know is this. God spoke and it came into being. That's all I know. I said, I don't know. And the thing about it is, from what I understand, it's, come, it's continued to keep in being, keep coming into being. You know why? Because God spoke it and his word's not hindered and it just keeps on going. He hadn't stopped. I, I said he didn't stop his word. He spoke his word and it became and it keeps on becoming and this thing keeps on expanding and they say it keeps on growing because God's word is power tonight in this house. Hallelujah. But when you just think about him, when you think about how holy he is and how eternal and infinite and omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent he is, that God would humble himself to love somebody like us. Oh, oh, it just ought to bring us to our knees and worship just to think that he would consider us in his love how that he could take a black heart and wash it with red blood and make it white he can do anything he can give us confidence he's the God of the impossible and so in that prison cell Jeremiah found confidence in God but I want to talk to you about where he was Jeremiah had a crisis and this is the problem they faced. 
The people, God's blessed them. And they've refused to walk in the will of the Lord. As a result, judgment has come. And judgment's on the entire nation. And the wrath of God's being poured out. And, and he's being poured out right before his eyes. Amen. And Jeremiah, he's, he's, he's so disturbed in his soul. He, he's perplexed by what he sees happen around him. And it, it brings him to this crisis place in his life. But yet he knows that this is what God said was going to happen. Folks, when, if you can just get a hold of the reality that God's told us what's going to happen, we shouldn't be all been out of shape when he does. He said there's going to be tests and trials. He said there was going to be. We all act surprised every time, don't we? I <laughs> mean, just, oh, really? I can't believe it, God. Amen. And the reality, he's promised it to us. He told us we'd be persecuted. He said, for my name's sake, you'll be per I mean, we. I mean, he's told us all that's coming. He told us all we're going to face. And every time he shows up, we're like, why well, God, you left me. Why? So we have a holy man. He's living amongst an unholy people. They're suffering because of their sin. And he's suffering right along with them. That's one thing you got to know. When this world suffers, we're going to, we, we suffer some too with them. Yeah. You know, it don't make, it make a difference how strong or how well grounded you are. It cause you problems, folks. I said it cause you problems. Amen. We, 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 we've somehow gotten the idea that knowing God somehow guarantees a freedom from problems of life. I'm telling you, this economy falls, it's going to, it's going to affect us. I said, if the dollar fails, it's going to affect us. Amen. I mean, what, what, whatever, whatever, whatever comes to this to this world, it has an effect on us. Does that mean God's not going to take care of us? No, that doesn't mean not, God's not going to take care of us. But what it does mean is, if they suffer, we're going to suffer with them because we're here with them. So God's judging. He's judging. And then the, the devil, you know how he is. He's going to see that God's people are hated and attacked and persecuted. And when you add it all up together, what do you have? You got a recipe for a crisis. That's what you got. Stuff going wrong. Stuff not working right. The devil's stirring. You just you, you got a crisis on your hands. But Jeremiah had a plan. He's thrown in prison. And the strangest thing happens. God told him, said, buy you some property. Really? I mean, Jeremiah, he, I mean, I mean, he's preaching the judgment of God. He's preaching the judgment of God's on you. More judgment's coming. And he's telling them that the whole nation's about to be destroyed. The people are being taken away in the ba in the Babylon as slaves, and God's telling Jeremiah, "Buy property, buy property you probably won't ever see, much less ever use." And this transaction brought him to another big crisis in his life. You know, it don't always make sense what God tells us to do, does it? <laughs> I mean, He works in ways we don't understand. And sometimes in my life, I didn't understand. And sometimes I don't understand why some people have such a hard time with life. I don't, I don't understand. But I don't focus on that. I'll have a moment of crisis as well if I focus too hard. But I've got to learn, you've got to learn, to look past the things that go on and just know God's in control of all things. But then the predicament that he feared. He had, he, 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 he's, in a, he's in a difficult place. And I think part of his crisis comes to him because of the fact that he didn't want to look like a fool. Now, every one of us like that. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, you know, Lord, don't, don't have me do nothing crazy now because I, I don't want to look, I don't want to look crazy. I don't want, I don't want to look like a fool. But here he was, he's in prison buying property. The nation's being destroyed. <laughs> They're taken in captivity. And he, he just knew that 
But everybody probably said, you know, old Jeremiah, he's done lost his mind. He's, he's in there. You know, he's the most ineffective preacher that ever walked the planet. And here he is. He's, he's, he's in jail, probably not going to get out. The whole country's going down the tube, and he's out there buying property. But then you get to thinking about what God's had folks do. Have you ever thought about, have you ever thought about Moses at the Red Sea not knowing what to do and God said, how about that stick? <laughs> you know, if I'd been Moses, I'd said, look, Lord, you know, a stick? For real? A stick? Strike a rock? Make water come out of it? I mean, may, may, take a snake and put it up on a pole and tell people to look at it and if they get bit by a snake, they won't die. And then, of course, there's old Isaiah. He's commanded to walk around naked as an object lesson for the king. I mean, I'm just trying to tell you that everything that God tells us to do doesn't make logical sense. But that don't mean God doesn't tell us. That don't mean God's not talking to us. Amen? So he had confidence. Then he had a crisis. And then, what about his comfort? The Lord talks to him. I said, the Lord talks to him in the hour of crisis. And what God says to him should comfort us as like it does his. Amen? He was comforted by God's power. God tells Jeremiah, he says, he says that he'll bring judgment upon the people of Israel because of their sins. Everything he's promised to do, he's able to bring it to pass. But God reminds him that he's the God of all flesh. He's going to judge them. And he's going to use these lost pagans of Babylon to judge them. And God declares his power by asking Jeremiah a very simple, straight word of the question. He says, anything too hard for the Lord? Oh, yeah. Is anything too hard for the Lord? I mean, can't, can't you just imagine Jeremiah's mind? I mean, I, I'm just sure his mind's going everywhere. I mean, just, just, just all kind of stuff's going on here. Amen. And God's simply saying, there's nothing beyond my power, and there's nothing too good, difficult for me to do. And we ought to hold on to that. I mean, Matthew 28 and 18, Jesus said, all power in heaven and in earth Give it to me. Oh, yeah. And he's still God who's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever ask or think. You've got to know that. He's still the God. He's still the God who works all things after the counsel of his own will. Ephesians 1 and 11. He's still that same God tonight. No matter what. No matter what it seemed like. No matter where you don't understand it or not. No matter where you can't see past where you are. It doesn't make any difference. He's still there. But he should comfort us. We should allow it to comfort us. We should allow it to give us great comfort like it did Jeremiah. So he was comforted by God's promises. God tells Jeremiah that the people are going to fail. They go into captivity. He tells, he tells the prophets he's going to bring them home again. I said he tells the prophets he's going to bring them home again. He's going to gather them to himself. He said they're going to serve me. I mean God's talking to him. Amen. He'll be their God. They'll be his people. Judgment, oh yeah, they're going to face judgment, but the judgment's going to purify them and they're going to return to him and to the place of blessing. And so it will be with us. The Lord uses the crises of our lives to mold us, to grow us, and to develop us. To grow us, develop us, and mold us. He uses pain. He uses hardship. He uses suffering. He used the trials of this life to make us like Jesus. But he's a God of the impossible. He can take that situation you see as being impossible and transform it to a time of blessing for you and glory for him. So the promises of God are intended to give us peace and encouragement no matter where we are. And he'll bring them to pass. 
And the thing about it is, is not one of his promises will fail. I said none of them. Not one promise is going to fail. They're all going to be kept. And so, Jeremiah, he's also comforted by God's proclamation. The God that made the world and all that's in it came to that prophet in that prison. And he makes one of the greatest prayer promises in the Bible. He's promised this. Listen, listen to me now. Listen, listen to what he promised. He said, if you'll call on the Lord, the Lord will hear you and he'll answer. That's what he told him. He said, he said if you'll call on the Lord, the Lord's going to hear you and he'll answer you. Just think about where Jeremiah was. I mean, he's in prison. He's living in the middle of wicked people. He's living in, 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 amongst a people that experience the most awful judgment of God that's ever been. But the Lord wants Jeremiah to know that God cares about Jeremiah and, God, and, and, and about what the prophet's faced in his life. He cares. He cares about where you are tonight. He cares about what you face. He cares about what you're dealing with. I mean, he cares. He cares for it all. Amen. He cares. It's a comfort to us. And so it doesn't matter where we are. He'll hear you. I said he'll hear you. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference what's going on. You say, well, you don't know how bad it is. It doesn't make any difference how bad it is. I'm telling you tonight. I've come here to tell you. God knows. God knows. God knows all about it. And he, if you call on him, he's going to hear you. Amen. And it doesn't make it what, 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 what you're up against. It doesn't make any difference. He's going to hear you. And not only will he hear you, he's going to answer. He's going to answer your prayer. Amen. He may not answer the way you want him to. Somebody come to this piano. I'm going to close. He may not answer the way you want him to. But I can promise you this. He's going to answer you to a way that's going to bring glory to his name. I said he's going to bring glory to his name. That's what he's going to do. Matthew 7 and 7, I'm close. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek, you shall find. Knock it shall be open to you. Everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. To him that knocketh it shall be opened. 1 John 5 and 14, this is what he said. And this is the confidence we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we desired of him. My question to you tonight, you don't have to answer out loud what you see, what you're facing, what you're facing. It doesn't make a difference what it is. It's not too big for him. I say it's not too big for him. He can handle it, no matter what it is. He'd comfort you. He'll help you. He loves you. cares about you. No matter what, he's God. Hadn't changed. Still the same. He said, mighty simple, Pastor. May be simple. I can tell you it's truth tonight. And I can tell you it's a word from heaven to us in this building. Every one of us, it's a word from God. I believe that with all of my heart. Amen. Just stand with me tonight. Father, I thank you tonight. Thank you for helping us this few minutes to preach. I just pray tonight, Lord, no matter what the future holds for every person in this building, whether they see it or they don't see it, whether they're in the middle of it or it's coming down the road, I pray tonight, God, that they would latch a hold of the reality that you're the God of the impossible. That's who you are. There's nothing too hard for you. You asked Jeremiah that question. Is there anything too hard for me? And we know the answer, Lord. There's nothing too hard for you. I ask you tonight, God, these clothes and moments of this service, God, speak to hearts. Speak what I'm unable to say. God, by the Holy Ghost, speak to hearts tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I wouldn't preach this gospel without opening this altar. I'm going to invite you to come. Maybe you just want to come and linger. Maybe you got a need. You need to bring it. Whatever it is, I can tell you altar's a good place to be. I said it's a good place to be. 
It's a place following the word of God that God can talk to us. Amen. We can hear him clearly this time.